Is here, the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you've joined us this morning via Zoom and Facebook Live. Let's all join together in our opening chant. <laughs> Blessing to the world. I am the heart, I am the hands, I am the voice of spirit on earth. And who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world. We are the heart, we are the hands, we are the Spirit on earth, and who we are, and all we do is a blessing to the world. Hmm. So, feeling that energy of being a blessing to the world, let's join together in prayer. As we turn our attention inward, we allow ourselves to feel the blessing of life, that one life, that one power, that one infinite invisible that we call God, that truly is the life of all. It is this one that animates all creation. It is fully and equally present throughout the universe expressing itself through all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this service here and virtually, including every being everywhere. We are all expressions of this life of God. And so I absolutely know that God is fully present, unfolding throughout our time together this morning that we come together feeling its impulse for a greater realization of itself in us and around us and to see itself more fully expressed in the world. And so I know that every part of this service supports that intention, that we awaken to that vibration of God in and around us as this sense of connection that we all share I know that we are touched and inspired and uplifted by God moving through our music ministry this morning, through Sam and Karen and our soloist Harold. I absolutely know that we are uplifted by the message that we hear this morning through Dr. Mark. I know that Dr. Mark is that vessel through which we hear exactly what we came to hear today, to awaken to that presence of the divine in us and to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right here, right now in this moment for all the blessings that I know we receive throughout our time together. And in gratitude, 
I release this word knowing it's already so in the mind of God, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life. And God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is. And now please join in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's join for our congregational hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. the time for us to join together in silence for a few moments. For five minutes, we're going to meditate. And so I invite you for the next five minutes to just get still, get comfortable wherever you're seated right now. Close your eyes, turn your attention inward, and silently repeat to yourself, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over again, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
This is the moment right here and now to lay down our burdens and come together somehow. It might not be easy to cross this divide, but Lord knows we've got to try. Let love be our witness as we stand in forgiveness. We all want to find common ground. We need each other. We need each other. of compassion rise up and overflow and wash away the enmity with kindness and empathy and no one can do it alone we need each other we need each other now Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. We are so happy to have you as part of our virtual congregation. Can't wait till we can all be back together again. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit, or at least I'm going to start, because this is what was uh, running through my head all week around this idea of boundaries. Um, you know, this is uh, something that people talk about a lot these days, and I really see that as we grow spiritually, there is a time and a place for them. And then we actually move beyond that. So as we move from what I call beginning or often victim consciousness into learning how to work creatively with the law, the spiritual, basic spiritual law of consciousness, then moving from that victim to learning how to work with the law, one of the things we do is we start to have some boundaries. Um, why do we need them? I think people generally feel they need them because uh, they've been abused in the past, that people have walked all over them, that they've wiped their feet on them. You know what I mean? You know, we feel like, oh my God, I have to have some boundaries. Otherwise, people are just going to so take advantage of me, I will, I will disappear. I'll just go down the drain. But now, when I think about it with all that's happening in the world today, and I really go within and think about this, I think that a boundary is, is a form of separation. A boundary is a wall. A boundary is when we cover our heart, you know? And I believe that um, no good can ultimately come from that. Uh, it's like we say to people, you can go this far, but that's far enough. You can't go any further. Um, but are there really walls if we're going to say that we're leading a spiritual life? If we're on a spiritual path, can we have walls that actually separate us from other people? See, because our relationship is with the infinite. 
And, and, and to me this week, this was really big. I have to remember all the time, my relationship is with the infinite. And so to try to compartmentalize people or situations or difficulties or things that I would like to avoid, it doesn't really make sense. What I have to go back to again and again is that I have a relationship with God, with spirit, with infinite intelligence, with the infinite. And that is the most important relationship I have is my relationship with God, my relationship with spirit. So the big picture is, I think, that boundaries are used often to separate us. Boundaries are used as a way to not keep our heart open, to put like a little halt, a little slowdown on our own growth. But see, we're all connected uh, on the invisible side of life. We teach that, that on the unseen side of life, all people, all people are connected. Why would we try to separate when everything good that happens in our life comes out of an awareness of our oneness with God. God is love. Love is in all other people because that's who and what we are. We are emanations of love. So I think we've, we've all have or have had, uh, it, we've experienced people who in some way invalidated us. They made us feel small, they made us feel unimportant, what, what, whatever that is. It doesn't feel good. We would all agree on that, I'm certain. So if I just check in with myself, I have to ask, now, having had that done to me, why would I ever do that to another person? Because, you know, we teach what goes around comes around. What I put out there into the universe is coming back to me. So knowing how awful that feels, then why would I ever do that to another person? Because I'm telling the universe, hey, bring me more of that. Right? I want to do better than that. I want to be a better person than that, and I'm sure that you do too. See, for all of us, I believe we want to feel like we, we did our best. At the end of the day, when we put our head down on the pillow and we look back and reflect over the day for a moment before we head off to the land of Nod, we want to know that we did our best, that we showed up in life today as the person we wanted to be. We were loving, we were kind, we were compassionate, we were giving. All of those things that we think of as the noblest qualities of our soul, we want those to have been demonstrated by us on any given day. For all of us, I believe we, we want to feel like, you know, we're like we're in the game, like we're really being what we came here to be. You know, we put a little more love, a little more light, a little more good into the world. If people make us feel, if people make us feel small or unimportant or wrong or judged, I know what you're thinking, well, what should I do? What do I do with those people? What do I do with those situations? I can't just let them continue to be that way with me. So the real problem is not that um, someone said or did something. The real problem, I believe, is that on some level, deep down, on some level, we agree with what people said or did, or it would not affect us so much. I know that's a hard, hard part of our teaching. But if, if, if I don't agree, right, if I don't agree, people can say whatever they want to say, and it'll just be like water off the back of a duck. People might say, uh, you know, well, what about, what about my needs, you know, because we hear that phrase a lot. Well, what about my needs? I've got to have my needs met. All of your needs, I'm, spiritually I'm speaking now, all of your needs have now, will all, and ha have always been, and will always be divinely met. That's the consciousness that we want to inhabit, that whatever the outer plane statistics and facts and things are right now, on the inner plane, you as spirit, your needs have always been met and they will always, always be met. And that's the consciousness that I think we need to be embracing of all the time, regardless of externals. We're a metaphysical church. We don't base how we're doing on an external thing. You know, it's that mistake that people make. They compare their insides to other people's outsides. And I want you to just look at your insides, right? That's what, we're, what we want. Um, I've had people say, well, you know, I just, I give too much, Dr. Mark. Well, based on the current condition of the world, <laughs> I think we, we um, we have a ways to go before we can say we give just we just give too much. I get this little magazine. I know many of you get it. It's the AARP magazine. I, I, actually, I love it, and because um, they always put some nice little uh, things in there. And there was an article I read this past week about a man in Michigan, and he was um, 
uh, a mason, uh, a, a mason, uh, uh, a masonry contractor. That's what I'm trying to say. He worked with bricks and stones, and <laughs> and he had built in his backyard uh, a pizza oven to have friends over, and his family would have like pizza parties in the backyard. I thought, what a great thing! I've always wanted one of those ovens. Someday I'll build one here at the church somewhere, so we can all you can come to church, and then we'll have hot pizza after church. Doesn't that sound great? And uh, because pizza is gonna, one of God's perfect foods. I mean, think about this: pizza is a perfect food. Before they messed up the food pyramid, okay? Because you got your bread. So with the old categories, you have bread. You have vegetables, you have dairy, you have meat. All four food groups are included in pizza. So clearly pizza was a perfect idea in the mind of God that manifested on earth. This is why everybody likes pizza. You can go anywhere in the world and people love pizza. Kids love pizza. Why am I talking about pizza? I have no idea. Oh, so this man, this masonry contractor had built this pizza oven in the backyard. And when the virus was happening and, and, and he noticed very quickly that like, the grocery stores were out of bread. So he started baking bread and giving the loaves away. He started um, giving bread to people who were working on the front lines. He started bringing loaves of bread to nursing homes and hospitals. And he says his whole family is involved, his wife, his mother-in-law, his kids. And they, you know, they all wear gloves. And the bread goes from a you know, 450 degree or 550 degree oven, whatever it is, right into a paper bag. So it's all very sanitary. And he says they're doing over 100 loaves of bread every day. And, and I, I thought this was incredible because he thought, this is what I can do. This is how I can be somehow part of putting a little healing, a little love, a little light into the world here. And, and I just love that idea. And, and besides, who doesn't love bread? I mean, come on, you know? Uh, and, and just somebody baked homemade bread and gave it to you? Oh, my God. You know, one of the things I've learned about food over the years is that if we can receive food in the consciousness that it was shared with us, it can only bless us. Right? Because it's just energy. It's the energy of God. So the notion, I'll get back to my talk now. So the notion of, um, I have to be tough, I have to be strong to protect myself, to, to not be taken advantage of. When I think about that, you know, we don't get healed. Healing doesn't happen because we become gruffer, harder, tougher people. Right? That's not how, that's, that's not how healing works. Um, People jump to, well, if I'm, if I'm loving and kind, then I'm just going to be a doormat, right? I think that's a big jump, you know, because I think that's also, it's, it's just not so. The highest power is to know that there is nothing anybody can do to us. Because the truth is, I belong to God. You belong to God. So the challenge of being on the spiritual path is, it seems to me, to keep my heart open and keep opening my heart regardless of what the appearances say, right? Because we don't want to be guided and dictated to by appearances. We believe in a higher reality, a spiritual truth that is so much greater than the evidence of the earth plane. So that to me seems to be the challenge on a spiritual path, keeping my heart open because life is always presenting us with little pockets of evidence as to why we should close our heart, why we should close our heart. You know, can I love a little more in this situation? How about in this situation? How about when I think about that person? Can I love a little more? Yes, people do and say hurtful things. I get it. We all get it. Everybody has had those experiences. People sometimes do and say unconscious things. People behave in a way it's just really, really unskillful. Humanly, I cannot prevent that. But it's not that those things happen. It's how I, in my own mind, experience those things. You know, I, you know I, I could go unconscious as a result of that, or I could become more conscious. I could become more unloving, or I could become more loving as a result of those things. See, I think this is actually the message of, of Christ is to love more. If someone treats you badly, then, then you have to not just like say, oh, well, I'm just going to close myself off to them. Somebody treats you badly. Somebody says something or does something unkind. Immediately, your response must be, I forgive you. I say earnest all the time. I forgive you earnest, right? I release you to God's love. I forgive you earnest. I release you to God's love. I forgive you earnest. I release you to God's love. Let that become like your prayer, your mantra on and on again and again. And what happens is you get free. 
you get free. The hook is no longer there for you, right? Because power ultimately is an expression of God's love. Power comes from love. Power comes from God within us. You know, so there, there's really, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. You know, that, that it seems to me that in the world we're living in right now, the whole notion of having to constantly protect ourselves. I mean, look, in the Bible it talks about render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and render unto God that which is God's. So Caesar's part is when I'm out in the world, I wear a mask. Obviously not right now because I'm talking to you and everybody is far away from me. But that's what I need to do in the world. When I'm out walking my dog, I'm wearing a mask, I'm doing the stuff I'm supposed to be doing. When I go to the grocery store and things like that, I'm not saying deny what makes you feel safe because everybody's safety curve is a little different. So you have to do what makes you feel safe, what allows you to stay in that place where you know God is right where you are and all is well. And I realize that will be different and continues to be different for everybody. And I think that's okay, you know? The, the truth is spiritually, each of us, we, we are so much more than we have thought we are. We are these big, infinite spiritual beings, these beings of love and light and goodness and joy. I mean, I believe that's the truth about everyone. And our goal is to create a context, to create a world where everyone can come forward as that, where everyone can be their gift. And then, you know, we won't have to worry about we'll be having a war. We'll be just thinking about planning our next party. I would like you to join me in prayer. But before I do, I want you to know we are doing everything we can to keep our church going so it will be here for you when this virus experience is over. So I hope that you will continue to support us. We could not do this without you. And so I thank you in advance. Let's pray. We turn our attention inward now recognizing that right here where we are, God is, that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite loving spirit. The very principal power and presence of life itself courses through our veins. We are one with God and we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so I claim for each and every one of us now that we see ourselves as the great vessels of love and life that God has made us to be. Each and every one of us, we are a vessel of love and light in the world. I know the way is made clear for each and every one of us to give into life in a healing way. And that anything that we have carried with us that does not serve us, whether it's a thought or a belief or an idea or a habit pattern, a belief about other people or life or the world, if it doesn't serve us, I claim right here, right now, that in this instant, in this holy instant, we put it down. We let that belief go. And we embrace a greater truth, the truth that we are each emanations of God's light and love in the world. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, grandchildren, aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews. And we know that right where they are, wherever they are, God is present right there in its fullness. The infinite mind is being itself uniquely and perfectly by means of each and every one. And so we wrap our spiritual arms around the world that we live in and let the blessing from our mind and heart come forward to touch every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. We let our word be a healing solve and energy of light and love so that everyone gets to be lifted up. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. I'm certain we are blessed by being together in consciousness. And so I would ask you this morning to imagine in your mind's eye to just for a moment move down the road with me to a time when this virus is completely healed, that this appearance of illness is no longer an experience any of us are having. We know that cure, that perfect vaccination exists in the infinite mind of God. And I know that we are the perfect vessels to receive everything that needs to be known, so healing is taking place right now. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks, I release this word, and so it is, together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am 
am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Turn the news on, you get your blues on from all the negativity. It's hard to wrap yourself around what's going down on TV. You can stress it, second guess it, you can think about it way too hard, or you can move the conversation from your head to your heart. Sometimes it's a matter of just letting go. Holding on to the one thing we know oh, Love wins Love wins That's where the circle of life begins It's the one simple lesson We're learning again and again Love wins We all matter It doesn't matter if we're on one side or the other As long as we find a way To get along with one another We can't agree to disagree Or maybe even realize That we see another point of view When you look through someone else's eyes And sometimes it's as easy as Just letting go Holding on to the Thank you so much. For those who are interested in getting some of Harold's music, uh, you can go to his website, haroldpainmusic.com. Pain is P-A-Y-N-E. So haroldpainmusic.com. 
And major, major thanks to our musicians, as always, Sam and Karen. Thank you so much. Ha, ah, let's see. So we have a few announcements. Um, first of all, if you didn't uh, see the link that popped up or had trouble getting to it and wanted to make a donation, uh, just go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. That'll take you straight to our donation page uh, to make your contributions, and thank you for those. Also, if you would like to call in with an ATM card or um, a credit card, just uh, know you can call till about 11 o'clock. We'll um, be here in the church office, 818 762 7566 to take your donations. You can get prayer with a practitioner for 30 minutes after the service. So join us on Zoom if you're not already on Zoom, if you're on Facebook Live, just switch over to Zoom and we can hook you up with a practitioner for a private one minute miracle, as we call them. Also feel free if you would like us to pass on a prayer request to all of our practitioners. You can email them to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office and select the be of prayer option to be able to leave a message with whatever prayer request you may have. Or if it's one of those days you just really need to hear the word of truth, uh, you can call the church office and select dial a prayer and you can hear a pre-recorded uh, message with a, a uh, spiritual mind treatment uh, done by one of our practitioners. Uh, so this coming Wednesday, we have our special bi-monthly Teze service. So I just, okay, I have to say this, because I, you know, half French. Teze. Okay, it's very simple. Teze. Because I hear a lot of people very confused how to pronounce it. It's really easy. Teze. Okay. <laughs> service. July 1st via Facebook Live and Zoom. Meditation starts at 645. Service is at 7. And this is led by our wonderful practitioner, Joanne O'Brien, who will be joined by Dr. Mark and myself uh, for an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. And as I said on Wednesday, don't worry, we leave the chanting up to Joanne. So uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, we invite you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website, weekly e blogs and monthly newsletters. Uh, if you haven't already done so, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and sign up to get those notifications so you'll be kept up to date with any uh, new information about what's going on here at the church. For example, you would know that today uh, we will have our grief support group led by Carol Winokur meeting. Uh, they meet the second and fourth Sundays during this special time. Uh, Carol has uh, agreed to lead it twice a month, which is wonderful. And so you can join that via Zoom at 1 p.m. And the information is on our website to get to that. Uh, we want to remind you about our Zoom virtual patio service. So before and after service, if you miss getting together with con the congregation, just join about 20 minutes before and then stay on on Zoom after the service, and you can visit with people. We have a Zoom uh, reception line where you can meet with Dr. Mark, myself, and Reverend Aideen. Uh, let's see, our youth church, ages 5 through 11, are meeting on sun, uh, Saturday, pardon me, at 11.30 a.m. Teen church for ages 12 through 19 meet via Zoom every Sunday at 9.45 and Wednesday at 7.30. The men's group meets from 11 to 11.30 on Sundays. All men are welcome. Our Zoom meditation, see how much we've got going on? <laughs> uh, every Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. All of that is on the website. Also, I know we had mentioned that we would be trying to start reopening uh, for limited groups of people on uh, uh, July 12th. We have at this time postponed that till the 26th as we continue to monitor things. So just know that our earliest date that we might plan to open would be July, Sunday, July 26th. With that, 
again, just want to say thank you so much for continuing to be with us in this way and continuing to support us. Let's join together for the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen.